to dry right the area then you uh -huh. get stuck over uh -huh. there. Yeah. That's not the tone that I want. Uh -huh. So do, can I wash it over with water? Is that what I want? If it's still wet, you can wash it with water so that it will be diluted, right? And then let it dry and then maybe you can still uh, touch it up later with a heavier colour. To, to correct from light colours and to put darker colours on top of it, still still okay, still possible. From dark to tone to lighter tone is harder. Unless you use a sponge and then rub it off, but then you will still get a like a stained colour on, on it. Yeah. So watercolour is really not so forgiving. Yeah, you need to plan ahead and it's not as forgiving as oil where you can or acrylic where you can uh, you can paint over it now. Okay, I'm waiting for this to dry. Okay, this is the, just the first layer of the wall. Huh? I'm gonna go for the roof now. So I use a bit of this cadmium red light, mix a bit of orange. Okay, so this is the roof. A bit too dark, so I turn it a bit with water. So you can still lighten your colors when it's still wet. here to paint around the okay over here and this is where I like to use some dry brush okay and you need a bit more a bit confidence to do this uh, just to one time okay and then you can touch up a bit and give a bit of energy to, for you to your artwork. This is actually the, what we call the glazing technique. Huh? I painted the first layer now, painting the first layer now, and I painted here also the first layer. Okay. Once it's dry, then I can go to the second layer. Okay. <coughs> For watercolor, the first layer is always applying the first wash. You can mix colors on paper like what I did on the grass or the hill here. Okay. There are some rough patches here, it's okay, never mind. The first layer. The second layer is always always um, <coughs> putting in the tones, in the darker tones, the shades. So I'm applying <coughs> adding a bit of purple and blue here to make to create some grayish color. Um, because of the building is a bit creamy, I add a bit of this yellow ochre to it. Okay? Alright, so where are the shadows? It's under the roof. Okay. Alright. It's at this side of the of the wall. But I don't want to have the same color. Because this is on the wall now, so I add a bit more yellow ochre. And it has to be fairly straight here so that you get the so that you get the shape of the building right. Okay. And you can 
I even play with it here while well, it's still wet. Huh? You just throw in a, some other colors huh? to make it more interesting. Okay, where else is that? Inside all this, right? Don't take it away, bloom uh, will form here. But sometimes, if you forgot, accidentally leave it there, it's okay. Because this is part of the character of watercolor. Uh, some people may not like it, it will look ugly with a bloom. But I find that, especially for outdoor work, it creates uh, you know, like a spontaneous feel to it. But it's up to individual lah. I'm adding it now like this area. I know that there's um, a darker block there because it's the inside of the building. So I add it now. Okay. There's, there's a staircase there, but I'm going to ignore it for now. Huh? Just because they are inside, I just paint everything dark. here um, there are I can see three here so maybe there's one here uh, if, if you notice these are all negative painting I'm doing negative shapes here to bring out the pillars reach at the side here I usually just blur it out. You see that it's lighter now compared to here and that's fine. Sometimes finger is useful also. <laughs> Where else is that? Can you see? Under the palm trees, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm mixing some dark colors here. And because there are many, uh, what do you call that? The, the, it's like almost like bamboo shoots. Huh? So this is just an impression of it. A 
forget about the pillars there already because I added this bunch of palm leaves. It's supposed to be here, right? Uh, I, I move it around a bit, and then over here I can still see the all this. Um, call it the roof here. You can still see part of it over here. So just tiny. Okay, so you can see the shape is starting to form by adding the dark colors. Alright, <clears throat> let me have a look. Okay. I'm now adding more dark and dark to bring out the contrast. Okay, this is how we do watercolor painting from light to dark and from bigger shapes to smaller shapes. Just now you can see I'm painting very big shapes. Now I'm going to the details. Slowly, slowly going to details now. The, the underneath of the roof is always very dark, so we have to find to suggest it. Some windows here. Okay. And we have that um, what's it a pillar to support the roof there. It looks a bit weird uh, if I paint it in. I'm not sure if I want to add it. Because if I add it, it will... I'll just leave it like this. Those are additional structure also, right? The old building doesn't have that, right? Because old building, that's why they, they added that to support the roof. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Have to be a bit careful on this. Maybe I don't paint this first, since I'm right handed. Uh, Something I forgot. Then I paint here first, and then when I paint here, I smudge. Okay. It's the same brush but smaller. This is my uh, this is by Escoda actually. It's, um, Escoda is a very good uh, paint brush uh, manufacturer based in Spain. I like this brush, although it's synthetic, it's very sharp, you can see it's very sharp point, so I can really use it like a pencil to draw all the things there. And sometimes it's much... You're it's, using dark brown, dark green, eh? Yeah, this is actually, I'm using uh, Burn Sienna and Ultramarine. And I add a bit of this so it's like purple, blackish kind yeah, so it's a bit yeah. blackish, but I don't want to use pure black. Mm. So in my artwork, uh, brush stroke is very important. You can see that I use very quick brush stroke to, to especially when I'm doing all this dark area. There are things inside. Even you can see a LCD monitor that I'm not going to paint that. <laughs> Don't try to get everything you see and try to paint everything. Huh? When you're doing plein air painting, only get the essential. Huh? Notice that I get, I leave a gap behind here because you can see there's a thickness to that pillar. This is the thickness, the side where it's a bit darker, right? And this is inside of it, which is really, really dark. This grill la, but I'll, okay, la, I'll add it since it's a bit different. La, otherwise, every all the blocks is the same. It's a grill here. You can see I can go into really tiny lines with this brush. Okay. 